Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease caused by the spirochete treponema pallidum. It is transmitted through sexual contact, contact with an open chancre, or transplacentally. Primary syphilis will manifest as a chancre, which is a single non-painful, indurated ulcer with smooth margins which can form on the anus, mouth, penis, or vagina. The chancres heal within three to six weeks without treatment. Primary syphilis is a self-limited stage of the disease, but highly contagious, and the disease will spread to regional lymph nodes. Secondary syphilis occurs one to three months later and rarely coexists with primary syphilis. Patients will present with flu-like symptoms, macular papular rash on their palms and soles, and condylomata lata, which are highly infectious, white, wart-like lesions on genitalia. Tertiary syphilis does not occur until decades later. It can present with gummas, which are granulomas of bone, skin, and viscera, aortitis, aortic insufficiency or ascending aortic aneurysm, neurosyphilis, atabase dorsalis, which is posterior column disease of the spinal cord, resulting in proprioceptive defects, paralysis, or meningitis, and argyle robertson pupils, where pupils can accommodate but do not react to light. Infants who acquire syphilis through birth may present with saber shins, saddle nose, cranial nerve 8 deafness, Hutchinson's teeth, and mulberry molars. As discussed earlier, argyle robertson pupils can be a sign of tertiary syphilis, where pupils are able to accommodate to light but do not react. VDRL stands for Venereal Disease Research Laboratories. This test, or the RPR, Rapid Plasma Regain, can be used to initially screen for syphilis. VDRL is a high-sensitivity, low-specificity test that detects a nonspecific antibody against beef cardiolipin. This is an antibody produced by a patient with syphilis that reacts in vitro to the extract of ox heart and turns positive one week after infection. However, there are many false positive in patients with viral infections, rheumatic disease, lupus, and leprosy, as well as patients taking certain drugs. This mnemonic VDRL can help you remember some of these causes of false positives. To confirm a positive VDRL result as syphilis, do the FTA-ABS test, fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test, which is a highly sensitive and specific test for anti-treponemal antibody, the earliest antibody to appear after infection. Zoonotic infections primarily affect animals, and humans become host accidentally. Transmission is usually via direct contact with the animal in question. We will cover just a few of the bacteria in this chapter, as many will be covered later on or have already been covered. Bartonella is a gram-negative rod that is responsible for cat scratch fever. As its name suggests, Bartonella is transmitted to humans via the scratch or bite of a cat and causes chronic, painful lymph adenitis in lymph nodes near the site of an infection. Low-grade fevers may also develop. In immunocompromised hosts, Bartonella can also cause bacillary angiomatosis, which is when blood vessels proliferate and take on the appearance of tumor-like masses on the skin. Sometimes these masses appear like purplish nodules and can be confused with Kaposi's sarcoma and AIDS. Biopsy is required to figure out which it is. Borrelia recurrentis is transmitted by the louse and has a recurring fever pattern characterized by spontaneous resolution and recurrence. This is due to the ability of the bacterium to vary its antigenic expression and evade the immune system. It then proliferates in the bloodstream and re-stimulates the immune response after resolution. Brucella, another gram-negative coxoid rod, infects mammals like cows, goats, and pigs. Humans can acquire it when they come in contact with infected meat, aborted animal placentas, or unpasteurized milk. It is extremely rare in the U.S. because of cattle immunization and milk pasteurization. Brucella infections cause intermittent fever, known as undulant fever, because it rises during the day and resolves at night. Francisella tularensis is extremely rare. It is caused by wild rodents, such as rabbits, and transmitted to humans via tick bite. It causes tularemia, which can manifest in a variety of ways, ranging from cutaneous lesions, to pneumonia, to GI symptoms, to eye and cervical lymph node involvement. Pasteurella is a gram-negative coxoid rod. 
see the gram-negative algorithm, that normally lives in the mouths of cats and dogs. It can cause localized wound infection, cellulitis, and lymph adenopathy following a bite or scratch from an infected cat or dog. Yersinia pestis, an organism important for historical reasons, in that it caused the plague or Black Death, which wiped out the population of Europe in the 1300s. It is carried by rodents and transmitted to humans via fleas. It can cause the bubonic plague characterized by high fevers and buboes, which are erythematous, painful, swollen, inguinal, and axillary lymph nodes. Yersinia pestis can also cause pneumonic plague, which has respiratory and constitutional symptoms and an even higher mortality rate than bubonic plague. Gardnerella vaginalis causes vaginosis and is not an STD. The key buzzwords for this infection are that there is a fishy odor to the vaginal discharge, and diagnosis involves seeing clue cells under the microscope. Remember, for most rickettsia, this includes rickettsia rickettsii and rickettsia typhi, you will see a triad, headache, fever, rash, or vasculitis. The rash is due to the replication of rickettsia within blood vessels. With Ehrlichia and Coxiella burnetti, you will not see a rash. You should review these different rickettsia species and their vectors, but don't spend too much time trying to memorize each organism's vector. Instead, focus on rickettsia rickettsii, which causes rocky mountain spotted fever, characterized by a rash that starts peripherally on the hand and moves in centrally to involve the trunk. This is in contrast to rickettsia typhus, which starts on the trunk and moves outward to the palms and soles. Also, keep in mind that Coxiella is a strange one of the Rickettsia family and doesn't seem to behave like Rickettsia at all. There is no rash, no whale felix reaction, which we will discuss in a moment, no arthropod vector, and Rickettsia is not even in its name. One thing I will note is that for intracellular organisms, such as Rickettsia and Chlamydia, doxycycline is an effective antibiotic because it is one of the few which can penetrate into the cells where the bacteria are. Whale Felix reaction is how we diagnose rickettsial diseases. By the way, do you remember what organism causes whale's disease? That's right, Leptospira, which is a spirochete. The reaction is pretty simple. Patients who have rickettsia will make anti-rickettsia antibodies. When you mix patient serum with Proteus antigens, the anti-rickettsial antibodies cross-react against Proteus O antigens and cause clumping or agglutination. We didn't really talk about Proteus, but you may recall seeing it in the gram-negative algorithm. It is a gram-negative rod, lactose non-fermenting, oxidase-negative organism, in the same category as Salmonella and Shigella. You don't really need to know much about Proteus, except that it can cause UTIs and it is urease positive. Which other gram-negative organisms did we talk about that are urease positive? Yes, that was H. pylori and Klebsiella. These organisms can split urea into ammonia and CO2. The ammonia gives urine an alkaline pH, which is how Proteus UTIs are diagnosed. So the whale Felix reactions help us to diagnose rickettsial infections, but which rickettsial disease won't be picked up by whale Felix again? Yes, that would be Q fever caused by Coxiella infection. We've already discussed Rickettsia rickettsii, but this section also provides a mnemonic, CARS, to help you remember that rashes on the palms and soles of the body could be caused by Coxsackie A virus, Rickettsia, or syphilis. We'll talk about Coxsackie virus in the virology section. Now we'll talk about chlamydia. This obligate intracellular organism is unique because of its replication cycle. If you look at the figure here, you will see that chlamydia can produce infectious particles that are similar to spores, known as elementary bodies. These infectious particles can exist outside cells and are protected from the elements by their cross-linked peptidoglycan exterior. When this form is taken up by host cells, the elementary body transforms into a reticulate body. This is a metabolically active form of chlamydia, which can amplify DNA, RNA, and protein production using the host cell's ATP. Reticular bodies are visible under microscopy as cytoplasmic inclusions. Once there are enough reticular bodies to sustain production, intracellular elementary bodies are made that can then be extruded from the host cell, starting the cycle all over again. Chlamydia trachomotis is the most important of the chlamydia species you should know. 
It is a sexually transmitted disease that can cause infection of the eyes and genital tract, and in neonates can also infect the lungs. Chlamydia pneumoniae and chlamydia cytosai are causes of atypical pneumonias. Here is a list of the many chlamydia trachomoda serotypes and the diseases they cause. Types A, B, and C are more common in Africa and can cause blindness and chronic infection, which is easy to remember since A, B, and C are the first letters in Africa, blindness, and chronic infection. Types D through K are probably the most high yield for the step 1 and are associated with urethritis, pelvic inflammatory disease, and neonatal pneumonia and conjunctivitis. Lastly, types L1 through L3 cause lymphogranuloma venereum. Finally, the last gram-negative organism we will discuss. Do you remember what is unique about mycoplasma? That's right, they don't have a cell wall and cannot be gram-stained, and are also the only bacteria whose cell membrane contains cholesterol. You should remember that mycoplasma causes atypical pneumonia. Other important causes of atypical pneumonia are Legionella and Chlamydia. It is called atypical pneumonia because its symptoms are not actually that severe, but if you were to check a chest x-ray of these patients, you would see just fuse interstitial infiltrates that make the pneumonia seem as if it would be much worse. Mycoplasma can cause the body to make a high amount of IgM antibodies, which become directed against red blood cells at low body temperatures around 28 to 31 degrees. These are called cold agglutins, which you will hear more about in the hematology chapter. Therefore, you could check for mycoplasma at the bedside by simply taking some of the patient's blood in a vial and sticking it in some ice to observe for clumping of the red blood cells. Mycoplasma pneumonia is resistant to penicillin because it has no cell wall, which is the target of penicillins. However, it can be treated with tetracycline or erythromycin instead.